Hello dear ones, it's Alice. I thought I'd talk for a minute about superpowers. That's your psychic superpowers. <sighs> one of my favorite books is Patanjali's How to Know God. The one with Christopher Isherwood's comments in it. And at the end of that book, it's a short book, and, and near the end, there's a description of a whole lot of superpowers that, that were put together by the ancient yogis of India. And uh, beside each superpower, it says how you can, what meditation allows you to attain the superpower, right? And then either before or after, or maybe both, it states in this short, uh, this short treatise by Patanjali, states, whatever you do, don't try to gain a superpower. And then it gives the consequences, which are really dire. I think it was something like, um, it'll set you back on your path to know God. And would it not? Because it, it, it really racket, ratchets up the ego, doesn't it? To have superpowers. And so then everybody looks up to us when we have superpowers, right? And when that happens, we... Why bother with, with learning about God? Why, why bother with self-awareness self or, or uh, enlightenment? Because we have the world at our fingertips. The world is our oyster, right? And I'm afraid this might be something that happens to people sometimes. They get sidetracked with superpowers. Now, <laughs> Before I go on to the possible solution, I'd like to talk about some other consequences that, that I've intuited lately. Consequences of, of attaining superpowers, right? And here's the thing that I, that I feel about it. And you can test and see if it seems true for you too. It seems to me, when we ask for a superpower, we're petitioning, what really happens is that we petition the astral realm. We petition for a, uh, an entity on the astral realm who has those powers to come and, and be with us and, and um, manifest those powers in our, through our physical body. So someplace in one of our these vehicles of of our bodies these either the physical body the the astral the mental the etheric net the causal but some place in one of our our human bodies there's an entity that is taking up space and the rent that entity is paying is our superpowers and what does it get for that? It gets a chance to express its own personal agenda through our physical presence in the world. Okay? So, entities that do this, my feeling is, my intuition tells me that entities that will provide this service to humankind are not our best friends. Okay? So we have a chance by requesting superpowers to do limitless damage to the soul evolution of everyone we know. <sighs> Including ourselves. So what to do about this? Say we're not a totally enlightened person, we haven't totally overcome our ego, and somehow or other we've come by superpowers. What do we do? I heard of a guy one time who had too many powers, and he asked his teacher, his spiritual teacher, to take some of his powers away from, from him. They were getting in the way. And what I heard is that his, his spiritual teacher did that for him. So, if a spiritual teacher could do it, then for sure God can, right? God can do that for us. If we petition Him day and night, He can take those 
powers and those astral entities away from us and give us back our pure souls so that we can continue on with our soul evolution without harming anyone or ourselves. Well, I feel that's well worth the effort to humble ourselves, to humble our egos, and to, and to ask to go on in a very simple way on God's path for our soul through this, uh, through this incarnation. I really do feel that. It's a hard thing to do because when we get a superpower, then it's ever so hard for us personally to get past the third chakra. The third chakra is the seat of will for us in the world. And the addition of the superpower, that, that uh, settles our energy firmly down, far from the heart where it has to be for our survival actually during this cycle of ascension and regeneration. Our, our, our awareness has to be in the heart, not in the third chakra. We do need the third chakra energy to, to survive, but, but ratcheting up through superpowers makes that center uh, like our center of gravity rather than the heart, heart energy. So, so for our survival during this cycle of regeneration, it's good to just purify our, our soul field and eliminate um, these any astral ent entities as I, that are hostile to our soul evolution. <laughs> I have one more thing for you. Let me think about it. Oh yeah, I was reading this morning um, The Astral Body. It's a book put out by the Theosophical Society and put together by Arthur Powell from the writings of a number of Theosophical Society um, teachers. And um, he was saying that there are various um, energies, intelligent energies, that scoop around in the astral planes and take advantage of people who have similar intentions or um, samskaras that, um, that, are, that are willing to, these samskaras that are willing to, um, to go along with the energy of this, these hostile entities. And he was saying how sometimes in seances, entities like that can propose to be uh, someone else, someone that the people in the seance know, for instance, and what you might say, pull one over on these people, these unsuspecting people, um, in the interests of their own agenda, their own personal, like, uh, hostile life form agenda. And he was also saying that entities of that nature can um, sometimes come across an astral shell. An astral shell is, after a person passes on, after a while, they, they just um, outgrow their old astral shell and it falls off in the astral realm. And uh, it just lies around for a while and then slowly decomposes. And so, according to Arthur Powell, these entities can actually um, scoop up an astral shell that's been discarded by a soul and, um, and transport themselves about in it in a more di definite shape than would otherwise be show. So, and use it in a way as a slowly decaying vehicle for themselves to express their hostile intentions. Okay. And so from that, I started th that explanation. I started to get a notion and an understanding of how adventitious these hostile life forms are. And I think that during this time of so many shifts and changes in the human um, um, body vehicles, in the, in the different um, energies of the human body, bodies, um, that there is an opportunity for those kinds of uh, those kinds of um, for life forces 
if we don't stay firmly rooted in our bodies. And that is probably the reason why Sandra Walter has said recently that this is not a time to be going into astral form and traveling or traipsing about. The incoming light is very intense and it's very important to stay centered and focused with all of the body vehicles firmly um, centered around the physical body. Um, now, I do know of a case of someone who stepped out of their body a number of times because, because of their concern for the um, discomforts of the ascension process. And when that has happened, uh, what has occasionally happened is that such an entity has temporarily taken up residence in the body that has been vacated by the astral, by the astral form. Um, it's, it takes practice to understand what a person's uh, soul note is, what a person's um, soul keynote is. And, and so um, when such an entity steps in on the astral plane, what I hear is the same soul note, but with a change of um, uh, a change from positive to negative. That's what I hear. I hear the same soul note in a minor key somehow. Um, so, and the content of the thoughts suddenly changes from their pure um, spiritual intention and and understanding. The purity of their of their soul purpose changes. Uh, it seems to shift as they move into astral form and the other hostile entity moves into their physical and expresses itself there. Um, it, it shifts to, to, to the negative, to the indescribably negative that could never be anticipated in that person. I mean, if you were to talk to that, that high spiritual person, you would never notice such a, such a shift. Okay, so then as they step back into the physical, firmly into the physical, say, um, then that entity's driven out, and all of a sudden, there they are again, expressing themselves in the, according to their true, true soul purpose. Now, for those of us that, that, that talk to each other on the, on the astral plane, it's very important to make a distinction between the true person that you hear on the astral plane and the the entity that has momentarily displaced that person as they go astral traveling. So just a caveat, you know, you can tell by the flavor of the ice cream whether it's been sitting too long or not. <laughs> so go for the fresh, go for the go for the natural, go for the true soul flavor <laughs> of your friends, and you'll never go wrong. <laughs> oh yeah, I have one more thing along those lines. Um, when we're asleep, it is possible for hostile life forms to take advantage of our um, astral speaking apparatuses, generally on the lower chakric level and reflect energy from our physical form, especially when we're off in the dream state, um, that our, our friends and family hear and take to be us. Okay, so just a note of, of um, protective uh, anticipation. When we're falling asleep, and I got this information from The Astral Body by Arthur Powell, uh, and I agree completely because Tom Kenyon has written similarly about, about protecting ourselves as we fall asleep. Uh, a good technique is to, to lie down, right? And imagine a great egg-shaped uh, energy all around us that's, that's just brim full of protective energy. The egg-shaped encasement of a, of a huge and, and intensely packed um, auric field like an egg around us. And uh, then as we're drifting off to sleep to make our, our last few thoughts about some very high and lofty thought, thought okay? Nothing, nothing uh, in the, uh, make it a very positive emotion and a very high thought.
and, and fall off to sleep with that. And that will protect us completely during the dream, during, the, during our dream state, during our sleep. So 